fly was called the Canadian Brown Mohair Leech. At least the guys who tie it tell me that's what it's called. And it's nothing more than just a little bit of, of uh, marabou for the tail and mohair for the body. There's no ribbing, there's nothing in there. But, there's, but it, it's very particular in the way that it's, um, it's mixed. The body, the tail is a, just a, I guess it's a standard brown, but it's a, it's a premium, a premium marabou. If you look at the marabou, if you look at this section of the marabou, you see how it's got some really fine tips in it? That's not going to work so well. If you do use this, you'd probably have to break it off at this portion here, and it doesn't look all that good when it's, it may not even move that well when you take all those tips off of it. It, it can probably be done, but the premium marabou has these feathers that don't have any sharp tips on the end, and, and it moves quite a bit better because it's very, very fine. It's very fine stem. The section at the tip all has that really sharp tip on there, and it doesn't really show up very well, and it's kind of stiff like that. It doesn't really move as well as this stuff does. You can see how well that stuff moves in there. This stuff here doesn't move all that well. So you will only have to be able to use this much of the marabou feather. The way it's tied is really simple. It's a three extra long hook, size eight. It's the only size I tie it in. And you can see that this one is tied on a bent shank hook. Tied on a bent shank hook only because the guys who tie them tie it on the bent shank hook. Okay, did you bend that yourself? No. Yeah. These are purchased that way. But you can bend them yourself. However, you do need to heat up this section with a, uh, a, a cigarette lighter. And you don't want to heat it up too much. Just enough for it to turn colors. If you, if you heat it up too much, the thing bends way too easy. It, 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 you, know, um, you take all the tempering out of it. If you don't hit it with the lighter, and you try to bend it, you try to bend it that much, it's going to snap on you. Uh, almost, almost any hook manufacturer that you, that you can get the hook from, if you try to bend it, it's going to snap. I've tried it, and the only way for me to get those hooks before was to just take a standard three extra long hook, heat up the shank a little bit, and bend it. So, what I normally do on this is I'll start just below the bend and I'll go up to the bend, come back down, put a good jam knot on it, whip off the excess, and then come right back up to the bend area. And this is just the way I tie it, not necessarily the way they do. The section I'll be passing out is like this and there's enough for two on this thing, one from both sides. I usually just even up the tips a little bit, pull off the marabou like this, and measure it to about one and a, one and a half times the length of the shank, and then I'll tie it in. So that at one and a half times the length of the shank is sticking off the back end. Can you see that there? So that's where I'd be tying it in right there. I'll clip that excess portion off, tie it in right there, and as I'm wrapping backwards with it, I hold the tail up a little bit so that the marabou remains on the top of the hook. Go all the way back here to the bend and stop at the end of the shank. Now, at this point, 
I like to lift my fingers and straighten it out. Now if you take a look at it, that's a very thin amount of marabou sticking off the back. And the reason I like to wet it is because when I start putting when I start putting on the dubbing, the dubbing is going to catch the marabou if it's just floating around. So I want it straight and off to the side. What I'll do at this point is I'll take a dubbing loop. I'll, I'll make a dubbing loop. Approximately uh, three and a half to four inches long. That's more like five, I guess, but I won't use the whole amount. Now, it's important, it's important that if you, if you saw what I did right there was I took the thread and I went over the top of it. What you can't see is when it goes around the hook, you have the hook shank going like this and the thread comes out like this. And it leaves, a, it leaves an opening in between there. What I want to do is I want to close off that opening. So what I, what I do is I'll go over the dubbing loop and then I'll go over it like that and you'll see it comes to a fine point right there. All right. Now I have some dubbing tools. I'd like to show you that I normally don't use my fingers because my fingers are rough and it wants to it wants to catch on my calluses. So I use a dubbing tool that holds it open like this without getting caught on my fingers. The dubbing is made out of, uh, of five or six different colors. Uh, it's, it's, it's all uh, mohair except for this, uh, this uh, shiny stuff that's inside there. That stuff is called light bright. Okay? And it's, uh, I believe it's an olive light bright. But it's made out of four parts um, fiery brown mohair, two parts um, black, one part red, one part olive, one part orange, and um, one part um, this olive light bright. Did you blend this for your body? I, bl I blended it. The guy, I talked to the guy, I said, I want to tie these, and he, he said, it, it, you, can buy, you can buy the dubbing from him already mixed up, you can buy the dubbing from him already mixed up, but it actually costs more than if you bought the single packages and, and dubbed it yourself, and you get like four or five times more. So once I have the dubbing loop, once I have the dubbing loop made like this, what you do is you take out little tiny chunks of it like this. You just pinch out. You don't wax the thread. No. Well, you can. I don't. Take your take the the bunch of dubbing that you're going to get in the package, and then pull it out. Just fluff it out like this. I heard he was carding. Yeah, carding brush. Yep. Yeah. And then you take a little pinch. Free from the foam. Slide it. Slide it into all the way up to the fly. Another little pinch. Now it doesn't matter if you put it in sideways or straight up and down like this. I pull it out straight out, pull it up this way. If you put it in sideways, you're going to have a, a long extra bunch on the outside, and it won't all it won't all stick in the thread. Once I get about once I get it about halfway, I spin it. I spin the dubbing loop like this. Make sure that the dubbing stays in there. And then once I get it to here, I pop more in there. I squeeze it up a little bit, pop more in there, and then twist it some more. Squeeze, squeeze a little bit more in there. Notice how sparse it is. And it gets even more sparse because you're going to be
pulling off all of the excess. But you're starting out very sparse to start yeah. with. Yeah, you're starting off really sparse to start off with, and you can see how sparse that is, right? You'll see that when you start to pull on it, the stuff will actually come out like that. You can put it right back into your carded stuff. There's too big a bunch of that light bright. Oops. Yeah. I think that's enough. And then I spin it up fairly tight. I want that thing to be spun all the way around and I want it tight enough that when I go to pull on it, it doesn't pull out. And I take my dubbing tool and if I were, if I had just, if I didn't have this type of a holder and this type of a bobbin, I would just go around it with this dubbing tool, but since I have this, I'm going to weave it in and out like this. Now, where do you buy this at the Eureka Fly Shop? Oh, you can buy it anywhere. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just Waxy mohair. It's very accommodating of him. Well, I, I told him I'd tell everybody where, you, where I got this material and the flies from. You're probably better off just going and buying the flies from them. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the guy located? Eureka Fly Shop. Eureka. Yeah. The Eureka Fly Shop. In Eureka. In Eureka, right, yeah. Yep. It's a long drive. It. Yeah. It's a long drive, yeah. I found it. Well, it looks like I didn't put enough in there. Two things I can do. I can unwind it and spread it out a little bit. That's pretty good. And make it go all the way to the tip. You got it there. Look at that. Lucky. <laughs> right down at the tip there. And what is what are the what is the name of the thing? Um, it's me. Canadian Canadian brown mohair leech. Okay. And then all you have to do at this point is That's it. Mm -hmm. No, a little bit more. Whip finish it. I like to put a couple of whip finishes on this because the fish are savage on this thing. They really, they don't really hit it that hard, but the fish are so large that they just take off with it, and and it's and they've got such large teeth in there that this thing gets really chewed up. And then all you do is you take your little Velcro thing that I showed you guys how to make before, and just brush it out. Nice. Easy. That's it.